That was an expertly groomed grief beard, I have to say. Like, <laughs> Sam has got some skills. Well, mom, yeah. said, mom said it was three weeks, so I, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, this is... This is uh, I, I know people that would look like uh, Grizzly Adams. <laughs> you look more like Billy Gibbs. So, I, I, was, I was going for that, uh, for one BG. Yeah, as silly and stupid and, and uh, vapid as it is, I really wanted to have... Sam have facial hair, sorry, or thank you. Um, so you say you're welcome. You're welcome, yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. And I, I, I in, uh, sent an email to Andrew and Bob, Dab and Singer, this summer, and I was like, hey, I've been reading the scripts, and I think it'd be an, uh, a cool time. It reminds me of the Matt Damon thing, like McConaughey. I think this would be a good time to take my shirt off. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I was like, you know, this would be a cool time to, to have Sam look different because there's a passage of time and um, he's had more important stuff on his plate than shaving. Uh, so are you not going to give me credit? Hey, we it was a it was a mutual discussion. No, it, it was, was a not. mutual discussion. No, it wasn't. Let okay, me okay, help okay, your okay, memory. Jensen called. He's like, hey, man, I tried to have a beard this season. They wouldn't let me. You should try to. <laughs> and this was his reaction. Oh, oh, yeah. I should totally do that. So I thought I was like, just as a, as a, as a way to it. differentiate the character and, and change the, uh, we ended up doing uh, wardrobe and, and, and utilizing that uh, aspect. But I called Andrew and I had a long conversation about Michael and how we wanted to play him. And I pitched him, I was like, what if we, you know, what if I, I grew up facial hair, we changed the outfit, this and that. He's like, well, the problem with that is this, and I don't want to say too much because it might give away a little bit more of the season that we're, we're going to see. So it kind of it kind of put the kibosh on on uh, on any kind of beard growth. So, as a good friend, <laughs> I mentioned it to him, and I said, "Well, I tried, but I got I got put, uh, shut down. So maybe you ought to, because time has passed. You know, you could use the whole grief thing, and then, yeah." And You're I had, welcome. I had thought the same thing. <laughs> All right, thanks, man. Uh, was that your first time seeing the premiere? Yes. Yes. What'd you think? It was great. Uh, I thought it was pretty great. I all I could think of was, wow, I'm so glad I was not in that fight scene. <laughs> so that the fight looks scene, like a hellacious day of filming. So a lot of y'all know me, um, and have known me for years. Although I kind of was in that because. The guy who's been not only uh, a stand-in for me for many years, but also is my stunt double, was the guy that frisked him and shoved him in the back. So he's had Jared in much more compromising positions. Oh yeah, it, he he's thrown me around many a time. Uh, yeah, so Jesse, that was a that was one of the more miserable. And we so Jerry Wanick, who's outrageously talented, um, and is our set designer, he he thought of this like barbecue joint to have this showdown, which is awesome. But it was in July in Vancouver in July. It's not a, not a hot place, but it was probably 90 degrees outside cliff. 90. Um, and, and you didn't look like you were sweating at all. <laughs> <laughs> I think I changed shirts. Not a word of a lie. Probably. And there was times. a fireplace on and there was behind a fire you. Pit. They, they wanted to be a barbecue, uh, barbecue joint. So there was a fire pit that was legitimate and working and on, and you never even really saw it, but they had to put it on. Um, so, yeah, I was really happy. Can y'all tell? <laughs> <laughs> Jensen, at what point last year did you find out the Michael twist? Mm. I want an exact day of the week. The day, the day before we started filming that episode? <laughs> the finale? <laughs> when I read it. Really? Yeah, I don't read ahead. I don't, I don't like, read ahead, ahead because ahead? it messes me up. It, 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 you know, I start thinking and making choices of things that, that, uh, with knowledge that I shouldn't know. And for me, that kind of, that can alter the performance that I'm giving in this episode. If I already know what's happening three episodes from now, then that starts making, you know, subconsciously kind of helping me make decisions and I don't want that. So, uh, I try not to, to, I try to hold off as long as I can to read the scripts. I did know about that. I think, uh, you know, a few weeks early, I thought it was cool because, Oh sweet. Season 14, but I'm a totally different character. So, yeah. So if you don't find and out, I was like, things, thank God. <laughs> if you don't find out these things until you read them, what have been like the scripts over the years that like you will forever remember reading purely for like, like, did you know Dean was going to become a demon? Like, 
Uh, yeah, I do remember okay. that reading that script was um, the, what was that, end of season 12? End of season, no, end of season uh, 11. Nine. Nine. End of season seven? <laughs> Was it you nine? Well, yeah, I corrected you with eleven, and they were like nine. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, they go by so fast. <laughs> I remember reading that script and getting to the end, and and was like, no, no. And I'm reading like Crowley's long soliloquy. I'm like, no, no. That's no, no. Dean's eyes open. They're black. No. <laughs> Threw the script across the room. It was like. Oh, but that's going to be awesome. I remember reading, do you remember reading things where, so I remember reading things where I'll read it and say like, okay, well I have to be Sam or you have to be Dean, but the audience is going to freak out. Um, and one of those was that scene. And I went in the scene where he uh, wakes up to Crowley. Um, I was in the scene where the, so Jensen's not a small man for those of you who haven't met him. Um, or don't Not like eyes. the demon that you just fought in that last episode. <laughs> Uh, I had not met that guy. Also he was fantastic, also, by the way. Also named Dean, great guy, friend of Tom Wright's. Got it. So to, he had worked with Tom Wright many years. But they were like, okay, here's the scene. And the scene was written, and every time you, you read a script, and it's like, okay, uh, scene 39. Sam puts a blanket over Dean in his bed. And you're like, okay, easy. And then you get there, and the director's like, okay, well, we want you to put him down. Like, you want to carry him and put him down. <laughs> Is and this a like, deleted scene a, somewhere? What's it? No, no, no. Like it's special features. <laughs> special features. But they, they are like, okay, well, we want some, some, um, something to cut into, right? So they want you walking in. I'm like, he's a big guy. I don't want to. So you're walking in, and you're like, I can't really, I don't really know how to. And then you stand up, and it's like, you're supposed to be really sad. And you're like, I am sad. My back hurts. Um, but I read the scene where uh, Mark Shepard uh, walks in and kind of wakes him up as a demon. And I was like, man, I'm not part of that scene. It, they, they shoot the same day, so for those who haven't been part of television or film production, you usually shoot based on what location you're at. So everything that happened in Dean's room in the season nine finale was all shot in one day. So you shoot well, all yeah, this anything stuff. that's Anything that's written in one particular set is usually all of those scenes are shot that day or that, you know, over and it the could be the first days. and the last scene in the same day. Uh, Which anyways. has happened, funny enough, a ton. A lot. A lot. Yeah, we'll shoot the first episode, or the first scene of the episode, of episode, and then the next scene we shoot is the final scene of the episode, yeah. and we haven't done anything in between. We haven't filmed any of it. So and Jensen's always like, hey, what happens to this episode? What are we talking about? <laughs> I haven't read it yet. I was planning on reading it tonight. Wait, Jared, uh, yeah, you awesome. do read ahead, though, right? I do, I do. So how many um, times have you spoiled something for Jensen? Uh, he doesn't spoil anything. I'm like, really? That, <laughs> what else happens? <laughs> you know what's funny? I think, I think I realized as we were talking today, and who knows? I don't, I don't know what your process was before Supernatural when you were on Dawson's and all the other stuff you've done. I, I feel like it's almost ironically... <laughs> I'm not even trying to, no, I'm not trying to make a joke. But What's I mean, the process? I feel, uh, <laughs> yeah. where's your process, DJ? I, who knows what's life and what's art? You know, life imitates art. But I feel like Dean is very, or Jensen seems to take a very Dean approach. I never worked with Jensen before the show, obviously. We met in the, uh, the, the test. But Jensen takes a very Dean approach to the show, and obviously he's amazing and does a great job, and Dean is a, a great character. Um, I, I take a very Sam approach where I read up and read up and read up and almost get almost bored with something until I do something. And it's very, I don't know if it, if it was the way you always were or I think it was probably the way I always was, but it's almost funny how you accidentally uh, imitate your characters, you know? Because I'll read, I've read, uh, we're doing episode eight right now of season 14, so episode uh, 295. And I know, and this is my 200th episode. He was yelling at me because I was wearing my loud jacket, but it's Supernatural 200, so I'm teasing him. But No, it's not. It's <laughs> Supernatural season 10. Um, and it's not loud at all. It's black. <laughs> fair enough. Fair, fair enough. Uh, so yeah, so I, I think we take, I think we take different approaches, but I think I think it works. I think it works because I, I we sort of it's it's like a yin yang thing, right? Like I, I do this, he does that, and he can correct me if I'm wrong. But I feel like sometimes it's it's worked on set where I've said like, man, we're about to shoot this scene. 
I've read this a dozen times. I think it would be hilarious if you did that. And he's like, oh, yeah, you're right. Or he's like, hey, man, it just occurred to me that uh, you need to do this because of what happened. And you're like, oh, yeah, you're right. So it's kind of a cool little process to have somebody to watch your back and all that. Did you request that Sam get the nickname Chief? Yeah. <laughs> Is it my... I thought so. Yeah. Uh, it, it, requests it was funny. part of the beard request. Yeah, 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 yeah. And request is is a, is an interesting word. It was it was part of my contract renegotiations. Mm. So in season one. Uh, season one, yeah. <laughs> I was like, if we go to fourteen, I want to be called chief. Don't um, worry. When 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 we get Dean back, that is addressed. <laughs> it is. It is. And uh, it, it actually, I, I I guess that episode ran long, but there is a part where Sam is clearly uncomfortable with it, but I, you know, uh, editing happens and um, we lost that little I bit of sound. delightful. I thought delightful? It was like my favorite moment. <laughs> what was your favorite moment? <laughs> Being called Chief. Samantha? I think Chief is a great nickname. Isn't there like a commercial where they're like, I'm suddenly my father and I know because I start calling everyone Chief or something? Yes, like insurance or something? Yeah. yeah. Anyway. <laughs> is this where we hold up like insurance sponsorship? <laughs> right, this is actually all one big ad. This panel brought to you brought by. Brought to you by. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I am interested because obviously, like, Sam can't enjoy it right now because he's bummed because his brother's gone. Yeah. But, like, they've kind of got the dream in a way, I feel like. Just, like, the ability to be like, we have this situation, you do this, you go get these bullets. I'm like, they've waited, like, f I mean, I don't know if they ever really wanted that because they've been fine, <laughs> but I'm like, this is kind of unbelievable that they have this. I feel like Dean's going to come back and be like, yes, you do this, you Go get high. <laughs> like, <laughs> or he's gonna hate it. <laughs> or he's gonna be like, I think it's more bucket. like, I don't like everybody chair. all up in my business right now. Yeah. It's almost like, I think Dean is almost like finding somebody in the backseat of the Impala. It's like, what are you? Get out of here. <laughs> uh, I think Sam is more uncomfortable and sort of just more, well, I mean, we'll see what happens, obviously. But it's a cool thing to play. The, the bunker has been so. Uh, sovereign, you know, to the to the Winchesters and their close circle of um, compadres, that it's really interesting to do scenes. It's even interesting on set to film. We are like, why are there twenty people in the? We call it the crow's nest, the the place with the big uh, table. Yeah. We call it the middle letters uh, crow's nest. And so, even as Jared, I get to set. And I'm like, F are all these people? <laughs> so, um, who the heck are all these people? But it's neat. It brings a cool, and I think thanks to you guys, uh, it, it's, a, it's a neat thing to, to be able to explore these characters and these locations and these sets for so long to try new things and see what happens. And I hadn't, I hadn't seen this, obviously, so it was neat to see it. And you're like, oh, it, it kind of works. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice to have help sometimes. Yeah. It's always good. Um, okay, in terms of Michael, like, I know you've talked about, like, you read the pilot and you kind of, like, felt like you got a sense of who Dean was kind of, like, immediately. This character has been on a couple episodes, but, like, nothing super extensive. When you first approach it, did they, like, give you any sort of, like, description or guidance? Or was it, like, it's all you, go? I'm glad you asked that. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> and I called Andrew and, and uh, you know, and, and chatted with him. And he was very, he sent me a note. He's like, hey, listen, man, if you want to talk about Michael and, you know, kind of the direction or any kind of, you know, tonality notes, anything like that, he's like, uh, uh, please reach out. And I, and I reached out. And he's like, yeah, really, man, just whatever you want to do. <laughs> I'm like, well, that's not giving me any kind of concrete direction here. Right. And he's like, well, you know, you, I mean, I don't know. You saw what Christian was doing. And I don't, and I'm like, oh, okay. So I need to I'd look, watch what Christian was doing. He's like, no, I would say just kind of, you know, do your own thing. <laughs> and I'm like, the one thing that I was actually taking direction from, you've now just taken that away. So it's, it, yeah, I was, I was an island <laughs> unto myself. Uh, and Tom Wright, who directed, who did a fantastic job, they didn't tell him necessarily, they didn't give him a whole lot of direction on like how to, you know, keep, you know, the scenes or the pace or the tone or anything like that. So it was a bit of a struggle just trying to find, you know, find my place there. In fact, the scene with Daniil and I, um, we, we, yeah. Well, you knew I was going to embarrass you at some point, right? 
this was the first, you know, the, the, our first big scene together. I was playing this different character. She was, you know, it, it was our first kind of like meeting, these two characters meeting, and it was a, it was a fairly substantial scene. In fact, they cut it down quite a bit. It was a very long scene. And the problem was, is it was a night scene. And we were, sh we were filming this in July. Well, it doesn't That's get two hours. It doesn't get night in Vancouver until like 1030 PM. Uh, she had flown up uh, with the kids and uh, we were on essentially the children's schedule. <laughs> so we're waking up at 7 a.m. We got to that scene it was about Furthermore, three, 3 a.m. Furthermore, 11 when, when season uh, or episode one, 11 p.m. Uh, <laughs> episode one, 11, uh, what I'm trying to say is 11 p.m. is also 1 a.m. Texas time. Because you had just come in for that two days. So it's Thank 11 p.m. Vancouver. Your like local one, weather brought to you by Jared Padalecki. One, <laughs> but it's even, it's even later is what I'm saying. Like it, it, 11 p.m. sounds late. It was 1 a.m. Texas time where Dee and Jensen and the kids are at like 1 a.m. time because we're usually on Texas time. What, what time was that? Uh, 11 p.m. <laughs> equals 2. So if you add 2, and it's weird, you go to 12. Keep going. I'm done. You were talking about filming with your wife. It was going to be lovely. It was late. There you go. <laughs> it was 3 a.m. and it was late. There you go. That's, I'm done. Plus two. <laughs> yes, plus two, whatever. Plus two. <laughs> it's, I was trying to go back in my head, but there are too many episodes of like, can you guys count the number of episodes where you haven't shared a scene? Like, how long has it been since you haven't shared a scene in an episode? I think that was the first. Weird. You think that's the first Wasn't one? Wasn't that the first? Then what else? Season 12? What? The whole entire episode? Yeah, we're saying we didn't have a single scene together that episode. I believe that's the first time. Even like uh, the end when you were uh, went to the future, future Dean with uh, Castiel. What was I think that? We've season, always at least, season 12? That was season four. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> close. I think it was the first time. Can somebody prove me wrong? He was? But we still had scenes together. Are you sure? So the first episode of season 10. Okay. Still, this is only the second time. Like, is that weird? Is that wonderful? <laughs> so weird. But, but in Texas, Strange. it's season 8. <laughs> Because the two-hour time, time, right. time change. Because there's time change. Because you're on Central Time. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So I guess second time and 280 something episodes. No kidding. But I feel like still, I think you were directing. It 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 was certainly different than the last 14 seasons or 13 seasons we've started together. To go like, hey, going to Vancouver, whatever. It's like, cool, how's it going? How is everybody? And it's like, I'm not going to see you. Because usually when, when, even I guess the episodes we didn't do, when you were Demon Dean, I think you were directing, or you were at least there, because you were doing stuff. This is unique, because he almost had a, a, a chunk of time off. And I went back to Vancouver, and I was like, I don't know what to do. I don't, like, it was strange. I was like, I don't know who My to go. My friend's not here. I uh, look funny. I look uh, <laughs> I have this awesome beard, but no happening. one to show it off to. Oh, I have to ask you, because I wasn't there. For um, me? Yes, I have a question for you. In the, uh, I, I, maybe it was your final scene in this, when you're there with the, uh, with the thing on your eye. Yeah. Um, that may be my favorite part of this, this episode. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you why. There was nothing on your face. <laughs> and then... And then Castiel comes and sits down, and it's just like hamburger he's, he's meat. Still, and he doesn't even blush. <laughs> and he's got blood streaming down his face. And it, and Dude, he, he's an angel. And, and meanwhile, you're like... <sighs> yeah. Every, every and now and again. there's no marks on your face at well, all. There's, there's, and I know... And Can I take a guess? Yeah. If they give you the option of, hey, do you think you maybe feel a little bruising, maybe a little cut, maybe some blood? <laughs> he and I are both like, nope. no. <laughs> I will say this, though. Every now and again. Misha hasn't figured that out, that you can, you can just say no, and you uh, can just yeah. play it like this. Well, 
<laughs> when but you when someone's sitting across from you who looks like he just went through like a meat grinder. <laughs> I don't know that this works. He looks like that. <laughs> He looks like that before makeup. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I then he goes into Jack's room, and Jack's all bloodied up and beat up. <laughs> and and like, he's just uh, angry. <laughs> like paper cut the entire time. It is, uh, it is funny. Every now and again, we, we... So there was a scene many years ago with Zachariah, where Zachariah who breaks my legs. And <laughs> so Bob Singer directed it. And Bob, who, I, uh, who we both adore, we all adore, he won't print when we're messing around. Like, for whatever reason, he's old school. So if we're, like, uh, uh, making jokes, he's like, uh, cut, cut. Like, I'll just kind of yell cut and move on. But there was written in the scene, like, hey, Zachariah uh, magically breaks Sam's legs. And I'm sitting in the corner with broken legs. And I don't have any lines for, like, three pages. And you're and off like, camera. And I'm off camera. But I was like, what am I supposed to do? And there was a camera on me. For, so I was like, ah, uh, <laughs> ah. But when the scene was finally cut together, it's nothing. Zechariah's like snaps and my legs break and I'm sort of like, ugh. You know? <laughs> and then every now and again it's written these days where it's like, you know, Sam, you know, pops his finger and can't breathe. You're like, the f <laughs> Like Sam's died and been back to life and um, I don't know. You kind of, we're, we're, we're talking monkeys, right? So we, we do what they run on the page. Okay, so wait, the episode ends with Michael finding his, his army, his teammates, in vampires. How do they, how do they gel? I, don't, I feel like he thinks he's made a good choice, but that's going to backfire. Well, it's, uh, let's just say it starts with vampires. Ooh. And Michael's a, a, a fairly crafty uh, character. And he doesn't just want to have followers and, and these, you know, basic vampires. Um, he wants to, he wants to fire them up a bit and he wants them to win. So he's essentially going to create a super army, uh, which is so great, right? <laughs> uh, so yeah, all of the, all of the, the, the lore and all of the, uh, Dad's journal and now. all the research is gonna pretty much get challenged and become a moot point for season 14, which I don't know if that's a spoiler alert, but get ready. <laughs> I never thought I'd hear you use the word basic to describe, but that's great. Yeah. Taking Just your basic vampire. Basic. <laughs> run of the mill. Uh, uh, you know, your run of the mill Twilight. Uh, yeah. Standard stock. <laughs> I believe that's substandard. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Oh, whatever. It was 20 oh, years ago. <laughs> when 20, we started. Is it 20 years ago? <laughs> so is Sam going to be working with Joe moving forward? Uh, I don't know. Daniel, you tell me. What, what's your schedule look like, <laughs> Dean? Uh, you wanna come over? Um, I think Sam, as is, has been made clear from uh, this episode we all just watched, I think Sam is willing to, to try any... Route except to, for shaving, except for shaving. Currently, but clearly, what do you mean? As you should. Hundred percent. I wanted to keep it. Uh, Sam's gonna do whatever he can. Uh, answer all phone calls. That was a. That was the. That was the idea behind the the uh, aesthetic difference was more like Sam's busy doing other things. Uh, so we'll see how he ends up finally getting freshly shorn. Um, but you did the eyebrow thing. <laughs> it's just fun. Um, is there a period of the Winchester's life? Like we've had various levels of flashbacks over the years from like kids to teens to whatever. But is there a period of their life you still would love to see? Like a, if you got to do like a flashback? Oh well. Uh, God, yes. I mean, I... I think we've gotten to see little bits and pieces of it, you know, like uh, when they show those flashbacks of, of young, uh, the young Winchester brothers and, you know, Sam's in the hotel, the motel room watching TV and young Dean goes down the, the hall to get a soda out of the vending machine and... Um, I would, I would love, like, I love watching that cause it does kind of breathe a little life into those years. And, and I would love to see kind of more of that. I know that there was the, uh, 
the, the comic that came out, the origins, and that followed a little. That followed John a little bit more during those years. But I'd love to see what you know what the boys were doing when they couldn't necessarily go on a hunt, but they really wanted to. Maybe sometimes they'd stow away with dad, and he wouldn't know it, and they'd get into some trouble. But I think there's a lot a lot of story to be told there. Yeah, I, I sort of agreeing. I, I, I would love to see more. It's funny. It, it's funny watching a show that you're in, you know, because you're sort of critiquing yourself as opposed to just watching the storyline that Edmund said. Like, one of my favorite episodes is Death's Door, where Bobby dies. Uh, not to ruin anybody who hasn't seen He's it's one of my It's one of my favorite episodes, but it's it makes me cry, but it's fantastic TV. Like, I just love it as an episode of, like, and he and I watched together, and we weren't in that episode a lot. So we were both like, this show's kind of good. <laughs> you know? Um, What's it? No, I, I don't want to see people die, but that hadn't been said. My, I guess my point is, it, it, I think the, the episodes that I would love to see, it's more logistically difficult these days. Like, I would love to see the month after Mary gets burnt on the ceiling. You know what I mean? So... Um, you're a, you're I a wouldn't very small I'm not a baby. masochist, but I mean, <laughs> love to see what Sam's first word I, was. I feel like, <laughs> yeah, how big his poops were. Um, <laughs> sorry, I still have a kid in diapers, so I'm just thinking about young kids. But I, I would love to see what what John went through, how John figured out. I would love to see the story of how John figured out that his wife and the mother of his two kids was involved in hunting. Because obviously Mary Campbell was the hunter. She was the hunting family. And we've seen, we, we know, you know, with Mitch and the gang, that the Campbells were the hunters. And we know John became a hunter. But I don't know how that transition happened. And I'm, I'm super interested as a fan of the, the story to see how that went down. You know, how John made the phone call. Hey, uh, your daughter died on the ceiling the other day. You know, we're going to have a funeral, but the house burned down. Um, which I guess would be a weird phone call. Yeah, I'd, l I'd love to see that transition. <laughs> It'd be a weird phone call. And that was back yeah. in the days of the, uh, you know, no cell phones and no car phones. It was strange, strange days. Pay phones. Pay phones, <laughs> quarter. Landlines. What is, if some, like this is a show where like multiple people play characters, right? A bunch of people have done this for, played Michael. Maybe you guys have given this advice because you have had younger Sam and Deans, but like, if someone new were to come on and be in a flashback episode and be playing your character, what is like the biggest piece of advice you would tell them to like play Sam or play Dean? Hmm. <laughs> Jensen. <laughs> Bow legs. Um, <laughs> uh, that's a good question. I um, I think one thing, and I I I told uh, Brock this. Who, who did play uh, a young Dean. I said, listen, Dean, you know, he hasn't, he hasn't found himself just yet, and it's gonna take a while, but always play him tougher than he thinks he is, and he'll get there one day, but right now, he's gotta fake it until he makes it. So uh, I told him, I was like, be tougher than you think you need to be, because then the vulnerable moments actually come out better. Top that, Jared. Uh, <laughs> this is not a competition, Samantha Heifel. Um, I, I would say, literally thinking, if we all, for those of us who are older than 20 years old, uh, think back to 20 years ago. How different were you then? So I wouldn't really give advice. I think if you were to see a snapshot of who I was 15 years ago, you'd be like, well, what's going on with this kid? I actually found like a old Sony camcorder that I had with my brother. We were skiing in like Colorado. And I was watching video of myself on this little two inch screen going like, I, I, I don't recognize that person. So that having been said, I, 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 sort of, uh, I sort of celebrate and rejoice how different people are from you know, how different we will be five years from now, five years ago, 10 years ago. So I, I wouldn't really give advice. I, it, our writers are, are great. And they know the show, they know the canon and the lore, and they pay attention to it. And I, I, I read the script, and I, if, if something was obviously wrong, I feel, feel like I'd make a, uh, a statement or an email or a phone call or a text to the writers and say, like, hey, I don't think Sam would, would have done this when he was 12, which um, I don't know if I'd even do that. But I, it's sort of interesting. If you, if you could watch videos of yourself as an as a elementary school kid or middle school kid and compare it to now, 
it'd be totally different. You know, I mean, God, if you watch season one of Supernatural, the old the person who used to play Sam Winchester was totally different. So 10, 15 years before that, I, I would just kind of enjoy the process, I suppose. Couldn't grow a beard. <laughs> Couldn't. Tried hard. <laughs> Well, thank you guys for doing this. Thank you guys for coming out. Thanks, you guys, for coming. (laughs) 